Hey, what's up guys? My name is Lance McCurley. Uh, I am a reporter for the Lake Oconee News and I also run my own uh, blog covering UJ football and UJ sports called Dog Watch. I usually type this out on Saturday mornings, but I figured this would be a hell of a lot easier to do. Um, if you can, check out my stuff on Twitter, Facebook, YouTube. I also do a podcast called the Hunker Down Podcast with my friend Brendan Kerner, who is a current student at the UGA Grady College of Journalism. So let's just get into everything. So, on Saturday, October 2nd, the stage is set. Number two Georgia will host number eight Arkansas at noon with college game day on Myers Quad in Athens. I was there earlier today. It was a uh, hustling, bustling scene as I was coming back from a high school game tonight. Uh, Athens, Millage Avenue was just absolutely alive. Um, I can hear my neighbors partying next door, so if that says anything about it. But let's kind of get into the game. Georgia is an 18.5 point favorite over Arkansas, which is a lot of points. And today, uh, I got to meet with Holly Rowe and David Pollock along with some other UGA beat writers. And there was a cameraman from 11 Alive News that asked Holly Rowe if 18.5 points was too much. And she basically said, I'm not a gambler, but I can do the math. The people in Vegas are setting this line so high that they believe that Georgia can win. And I think that Georgia is going to win the game, but I don't know if they're going to win the game by that spread. Last week, they ended up covering the spread against Vanderbilt. They were up 35 to nothing in uh, the first half, and I had the dogs uh, minus 35 and a half. They ended up winning. But either way, let's just kind of break down the game. One of the biggest points of emphasis in this game is that a Georgia quarterback JT Daniels is going to be available. I heard directly today from ESPN reporter Holly Rowe standing right next to me saying that JT Daniels is questionable for this game. My kind of thing is, is the cat gotten out of the bag? Did she leak something? Who knows? Either way, I think Georgia's going to be in good hands with backup Stetson Bennett. A lot of people are going to boo Bennett when he goes onto the field tomorrow, which I think is absolutely ridiculous because that kid bleeds red and black. Hell, he put up five touchdowns in the first half in the GUAB a couple of weeks ago. And I know a GUAB, but that kid is the reason the UGA beat Arkansas last year because if you remember, Dewan Mathis couldn't hit the backside of a barn, and Stetson comes in and wins the game for the dogs. I think he ends up going 20 of 29 for 260 yards and a couple of touchdowns. Either way, I think that UGA's primary thing tomorrow is gonna to be to run the ball. Even if JT plays, um, it it could be like a reminiscence of the Clemson game where you know he's just throwing kind of check downs, kind of slants to the side of the field. But I think this is the game where UGA finally runs the ball well. Not that they haven't run it well before, but it just hasn't been consistent last week. I believe they ran for close close to 260 yards or maybe even over, but I know it was a season high, and I know it was Vanderbilt, but still, that's an SEC defense, and those are SEC recruited players. This Arkansas team is a hell of a lot better than Vanderbilt, but either way, I think that Georgia's offensive line gets it done up front, and I think that Georgia's going to have at least one back over 75 yards, and I think that's going to be senior Zamir White. I think that we're going to see Kendall Milton, who didn't play last week. I think he's going to be able to come back and move the chains for the dogs. The Hogs will be able to get a little bit of pressure from what I watch from the tape. They're very, very tenacious, and they're very, very hungry, but I just don't think that they have enough talent because Georgia's got so many players on offense that they can rotate in and out. I think that tomorrow is a perfect opportunity for Georgia offensive coordinator Todd Munkin to run the ball to set up the pass. Freshman tight end Brock Bowers leads the team in receiving for Georgia and he's just been an absolute monster all year. I think that he's going to be able to get open in space. We'll see a little bit of Darnell Washington tomorrow, the 6'7", 260 pound sophomore from Las Vegas. I think that he's going to be able to get on the field but I don't think that he is uh, ready to go full speed yet. He's coming off a uh, broken foot injury, so I think that Georgia just kind of uses him. I still think that Georgia is going to use a lot of two tight end sets, and I do think that, the, that they're going to have John Fitzpatrick and Brock Bowers on the field, but they're also going to rotate in a little bit of Ryland Goad, possibly Brett Seether, and then you'll see Darnell Washington too. I think a big point of emphasis is going to be Arkansas's defense versus Georgia's offense tomorrow. The Hogs are averaging 35.8 points a game. Meanwhile, the Dogs' defense is only giving up 5.75 points per game, which leads the nation in scoring defense. The Hogs are averaging around 260 yards per game, but Georgia has limited offenses to just 66 yards per game on the ground. The Dogs' defense ranks 6th in the nation in rust defense, only allowing an average 
of 2.7 yards per carry, and that's amazing. Georgia's front seven is possibly the best in the country, and that was proven against Clemson, where they basically broke a Heisman front runner. Redshirt senior Traylon Smith is the Hawks' primary back, totaling nearly 300 yards and three scores this year. He's averaging about five yards per carry, which is uh, dangerous for the Georgia defense. But I think the biggest thing is Georgia's going to need to stop Arkansas quarterback K.J. Jefferson. He's a dual threat, and Georgia really hasn't seen that type of quarterback this year. I don't think that Clemson was really trying to run the ball with uh, with D.J., and Kirby Smart pointed that out earlier this week in his either Monday or Tuesday press conference. I really can't remember, but Jefferson's been able to rack up about 253 yards on the ground with two scores. Jefferson's thrown for 844 yards and six scores. His primary targets are Traylon Burks and Tyson Morris, but Burks is going to be his go-to guy. They connected last week on an 85-yard play against Texas A&M in the second quarter to put them up 17 to nothing, nearly going into halftime. And that play really kind of set the tone. So I think if the Hogs want success on offense, they're going to have to test this Georgia secondary. And we saw against South Carolina that Georgia secondary got beat a couple of times. Either way, I think that Georgia's found his two quarterbacks in Darion Kendrick, the former Clemson Tiger, and redshirt freshman Keely Ringo. The duo of K.J. Jefferson and Traylon Burks could be a problem for Georgia's defense, but I think that the game is going to be won on third down. Arkansas ranks 13th in the SEC in converting third downs. That is next to last right before Georgia's former opponent, Vanderbilt, who ranks last in the SEC in converting third downs. Arkansas has only converted 35% of their third downs this year. Meanwhile, Georgia's defense is number one in the SEC in stopping third downs. And I think that's, that's going to be a huge part of the game right there is, like I said earlier, kind of Georgia's defense, Arkansas's offense. Is Arkansas going to be able to move the ball? Yes, I think they will. But I think it's just a matter of time until Georgia kind of figures that out. And I think that Georgia is going to win this game. And a big part of that is Georgia's going to be able to stop them on third down. Now, if JT Daniels plays, JT Daniels is money on third down. He is huge for Georgia. He's been able to find guys like Brock Bowers, Ladd McConkey, Kyrus Jackson, Jermaine Burton, Arian Smith, Marcus Rosemey Jackson. He's found all of those guys at least once while Georgia's been on offense and faced a third, third and mid-range, third and long. Georgia's passing game has really opened it up this season. Like I mentioned earlier, Georgia's going to run the ball in the first half, and I think that even if Stetson ends up starting and JT doesn't play, they're going to air it out. I think that the offense, if Stetson starts, I think that the offensive game plan is going to have Stetson roll out and maybe find some receivers, but I think that's going to primarily happen in the second half. Um, final score prediction here, I'm going to go UGA 38, Arkansas 17. It's going to be awesome to see Sam Pittman back in San Stadium, but I just don't think that, uh, you know, he's he's going to be able to beat uh, his old boss, Kirby Smart. We were in an interview today with David Pollock, and David Pollock said that, uh, and he pointed out that um, Sam Pittman is perfect for Arkansas. It is where he wants to retire. He has really, really turned this program around, and I think the college football, especially the SEC, I think when Arkansas is good, the SEC thrives and it just creates more competition, but I just don't think that they're going to be able to outlast Georgia tomorrow. Georgia's way too talented. Georgia's way more physical, and Georgia's just an overall better team. So that's my final score prediction, 38-17. to 17. Thanks for watching the Saturday Morning Report.